This is very, very intimate. People don't usually ever find out this information, but this is how we sleep. Turn, please. I am Big Spoon. He's always Big Spoon, even though I'm taller. It's usually that like so we this. can't get away. And so this is how he holds me. And he's 105 degrees, just like this. This is what usually happens when we have to do manual labor. I sit and watch him. First impressions. Robert? Super Coes? Super Coes? Super Coes. It feels real dense and comfy. It almost it. feels like popcorn. <laughs> I can't describe it. It's called a purple grid. Doss. A uh, purple grid. Purple grid. When you bounce, I don't feel it. No? Nothing? Didn't even budge. Can I bring you some pillows? Yes, please. Oh, that's nice. What do you think? It's very cold, which I appreciate. I am a furnace. I give off heat. You are a very, I think the technical term is, hot sleeper. I am a hot sleeper. <laughs> I'm convinced that your body temperature goes up at least four or five degrees. This will potentially save our marriage because it sleeps. Cool. Is this an endorsement? It is, but what I will say is that it's actually a very, very comfortable mattress. Welcome to Pillow Talk, Mattress Talk. As you know, I get a lot of questions on my YouTube, many of them from you guys. And so I want to take this opportunity to actually respond. And I'm going to try and do this every now and then. So continue to ask all the questions you want. You guys have asked, why am I so busy? What am I doing? If I'm not shooting Queer Eye, I'm shooting Next in Fashion. When I'm not shooting Next in Fashion, I'm shooting a show called Dressing Funny. When I'm not shooting those three shows, I'm doing book appearances, I'm doing uh, speaking engagements across the country at universities. I'm constantly on the go. And so the things that keep me sane, this is the, your main question, how the heck do I keep sane? It's relatively simple. I have my husband who uh, keeps me completely normal, completely grand, completely sane. He's my rock. Um, and then sleep. No joke, sleep. I, whenever I'm not working, I'm sleeping. I sleep probably eight to nine hours a night. When I'm home, that's my opportunity to sleep. That's my opportunity to remember that I'm a human and I get as much sleep as physically possible. I take naps almost every day that I'm off, at least for half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, and so yeah, that's why uh, I managed to stay sane. And yes, did I just get a new mattress? I did, it's this one. Am I super excited? Yes, does that mean that I'm probably gonna get more sleep than I've ever had before? Absolutely, sleep is important to me. Okay, what can I tell you about Next in Fashion? Next in Fashion is uh, the new show that I'm co-hosting with somebody called Alexa Chung. If you don't know who she is out here in the US, she she's actually very famous in the UK. Also, um, she's a host, she's been a host for many, many years, and she's also a designer. She has a line called Alexa Chung. Um, it's 18 designers from all over the world. They are very experienced designers. They are working designers um, and I wish I could tell you more, but that's it for now. Some of our guest judges are um, Eva Chen, who's done a few episodes with us, Elizabeth Stewart, who is the, actually she's our most regular judge. She um, dresses the likes, she's a stylist, she's the, she dresses the likes of Julia Roberts, Gal Gadot, Jessica Chastain, Sandra Bullock, like the biggest actresses in Hollywood she dresses, and so it was kind of a huge honor to have her on the show. Um, I love the show, I think you're gonna be really pleased. Actually, okay, I will tell you this. Um, on Next in Fashion, for the first time ever, I have to use a teleprompter. And I know that that sounds so easy and so lame, but I'm telling you, it's so hard. So you're going to see me actually read a full script on teleprompter for the first time ever. And I would like to believe you can't tell that I'm reading a script. I would like to know what you think. So when it comes out soon, let me know what you think. Many things I would like to tell you about the book, but I'm going to keep it really succinct and tell you this. Uh, the book is something I'm most proud of uh, in my entertainment career so far. I love the work that I do on Queer Eye, but um, Natalie Tan gives a real idea to my following who has followed along for quite some time now about who I really am. You only get a snippet of who I am on my Instagram. You only get a snippet of who I am on, uh, on um, Queer Eye, but with my book, I, I tell you the real story of what it's like to grow up. Uh, South Asian in a very white community, um, growing up in a family uh, who are wonderful and religious, um, and what it's like to come out, and what it's like to be that person now in entertainment, how that feels.
and what, it, uh, what the entertainment world is actually about and how it feels to be famous all of a sudden. It's really weird. For all of you South Asians out there or just Bollywood fans in general, you keep asking about Bollywood, which I love. I could talk about Bollywood for hours. And your main question is, who are my favorite Hollywood, sorry, Bollywood actors and actresses? Top two, Shah Rukh Khan, male, ofs. Someone not so obvious, Amir Khan. I used to be obsessed with Juhi Chawla. Madhuri is the queen. Gajal, Gajal's my favorite. My favorite Indian slash Pakistani food is, this is really hard, maybe uh, kidney beans. If you haven't had kidney beans, like Indian style, it's the best. It's usually made at home, it's not very often you can get it from a restaurant. Um, or cauliflower, ca ca curry cauliflower, it's my favorite. A lot of you have asked about the Met Gala and which were my favorite looks. I know, I know, I'm late to the game. I've been busy. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been busy. I loved what uh, a Dua Lipa wore. I thought she looked fantastic. Gigi Hadid looked incredible. I also loved, don't judge me for this, Cardi B. The theme was camp. It was meant to be extra. Some people went extra in just a cheesy costumey way, whereas I think Cardi B's outfit was kind of killer. But my absolute favorite, without a doubt, was Ezra Miller. I thought he did it beautifully. And actually, a lot of the men outdid the women this year. Favorite summer looks, women, Shia. I love anything that's a little bit Shia. I think it's super sexy and it's gonna keep you nice and cool. For men, white, 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 white. I'm loving all the white and the creams for men. When I'm not shooting Queer Eye, and I'm not shooting Next in Fashion, and I'm not shooting Dressing Funny, all on Netflix, um, I am, at home, here, literally here, I, I literally here on my bed. Most of the day I watch a TV from my bed. I, I mean, I, I go downstairs in my living room too, but yeah, I'm in my house, usually watching TV and eating uh, stuff that I definitely shouldn't be eating. Are, are me and the Queer Eye Boys really that close? Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. When you are with somebody, four other people, for about, 10 hours a day, five to six days a week for almost two and a half years, you're bound to become close. Do we fight every now and then? Yeah, about stupid stuff like, it's too hot in here, it's too cold in here, who ate my crackers, who took my hairspray, who's got the blow dryer? Yes, of course. However, we get along so beautifully well when I'm not with them, I miss them so much. What you see on Instagram is a really good snippet of what we're like in real life. They make me laugh more than most people in my life and I love them very much. I have my crew, the Fab Five. I would love to know who your crew is. Tag them, I want them to see this. I want them to send love back to you. Um, I think everybody needs a great crew. My relationship with Rob. Um, Robert France, Rob France is my husband. I actually took his name. Um, he, our relationship is beautiful. We've been together for uh, almost 11 years. Actually, probably past 11. We stopped counting. Um, so yeah, we've been together a really long time. Uh, we see each other as much as physically, physically possible when I'm home. He works also, so when I'm in Utah at home, he's sometimes not, he's at work. But when I'm traveling, he travels with me as much as possible. Um, he's an artist, so when he's traveling with me, he will do art on the road. Um, our relationship is beautiful and it just get, gets better and better. Actually, this is the most common question I get from friends and, and new acquaintances and people in this industry. They'll always say, how's how's your marriage, like, how's your relationship, has it affected it massively? I'm like, no, if anything, it got better. He honestly is the thing, the person that makes everything else easier. He is the constant, he is the easiest thing in my life uh, because he makes me so happy. Rob, will you come over here and just tell them uh, what joy I bring you? A lot of people feel like they know him from the show, or they feel like they know you from the show, mm -hmm. and that's actually true. You, he's the same in real life as he is in the show, so he's an absolute sweetheart, of course. Just Brilliant. a gem and a dream come true. I thought you were gonna tell them what I'm actually like in real life. And so the, the, I am pretty much the same as uh, I am on the show in real life. There is just one difference that Rob might be able to tell you about around the house. Um, he dances a lot Constant. around the house. I don't remember what it's like to walk when I'm in the house. Imagine. An Irish jig? I was literally about to say an Irish jig. <laughs> an Irish jig. You know the one where they bounce up and down a lot and they kick? That tends to be 
things to be in. Yeah, we will be sat there watching a TV show or a movie, and then there'll be a slight beat that kicks in. No matter what's He's happening, no matter how cutely we are cuddling, I will get up and I'll start to do the Irish cheek for him. You'll never see Not it. one person other than my husband has ever seen this, and we also have a secret language. Legit, 100%, nobody would know what we're saying, but we can have a full blown conversation that's no recognizable <laughs> language. And it's weird, it's, if we've been home for a few days, and it's rare these days, but a couple of years ago when I was at home a lot, we would speak in this language all day, every day. And then we'd have we'd have an event, or a, a friend's birthday, or a friend's dinner, whatever, and we'd go over, and then I'd remember all of a sudden, oh shit, that's what he sounds like. <laughs> because he would speak English again, and I hadn't heard it in a couple of days. I'm like, oh yeah, he speaks in a proper language. When he's at work, I will call him, knowing he works at a hospital, and I will speak in our language, and he is forced to respond in English. He refuses to accept any sort of answer in English. So it I'll has to be in this language. In my language. And I'm in an office. Saying. I'm in an office with people on a telephone, and I'm getting important phone calls all of the time. So they hear me speaking all of the time. And so I'm saying in my language. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you repeat what you said? No, I still don't understand. You're speaking this really weird language. And then I end up <laughs> saying. I'm having a nice day in our language. How are you? <laughs> I've had a really obnoxious child. <laughs> I'm a nightmare to live with. How did we meet? We met online. Uh, before apps, um, it was 11 years ago, so there was the internet. I sound really old. There was the internet, but it wasn't. It, it, was, there was, it was like Facebook for the gay community. It was called Connection. And so you wouldn't ever send anything inappropriate. It was just like a, a, a friend site. Uh, and you would uh, meet people to potentially date. Anyway, I was in Utah. I was on vacation. He was living here. He's from Wyoming, but he was living here in, in Salt Lake. I had just kind of come out. Tans was one of the first profiles I saw. He was beautiful, of course. That's and nice. I messaged him. And then we went out on a date. And the rest is history. But that first date, it wasn't just a one, uh, one uh, event thing. We started out. It was meant to be. It was meant to be lunch. We had lunch, and then we didn't want to end our date, so we went to watch a movie. Bride was. It was the only one that was on at the time. Um, and then that went so nicely that we ended up going for coffee. We went for coffee, and then we still didn't want it to end. So we were about to go for dinner, and I had to. And the night, because so he had other plans. He had like a get out of. Um, he had a like a an emergency an emergency exit situation. Um, we all just know in means. case. Yes. Yeah, but I that was way early on the day, so I cancelled that. And I was like, I was going to tell people that they needed to call me to pretend somebody had died, but it's not necessary because you're wonderful. He blushed the entire first day. He gets very very red and nervous when he's nervous. Um, and yes, he blushed up a storm. I liked him immediately. Um, when I saw him immediately, uh, yeah, I realized that I um, was in for a treat. He was dressed immaculately, like looked That's beautiful, like even in sl is slow motion, essentially walking down the sidewalk. Um, my so outfit was wicked. It was amazing. Even eleven years ago, my outfit was wicked. He would still wear it today. I'm I sure. I would still wear that outfit today. Um, I realized that I had underestimated the situation, so I was blushing the whole time. Plus, I loved his accent. I thought his voice was very attractive. He was showing some clavicle, which is absolutely my thing. I Can't love you... seeing someone's neck. <laughs> Who knew? That was the Who sexy knew? area. I didn't talk much, I don't think. No, he didn't. No, he I had to go to the restroom quite. a few times because he was really nervous. He had to calm himself. I, just go and, <laughs> I had to go and look myself in the mirror, slap myself a couple of times, and then go and sit back down. Yeah, it was a beautiful first date. It was It, it was, was an ideal first date. I still didn't know. I, I, I couldn't read him. Because you're, you're so nice and chatty that I didn't know if I was fooling myself into thinking, oh, this guy likes me. Oh, he's oh, great. He's like, he's friendly. very interested in me. I thought maybe he's just being very friendly. I touched his back. He and touched I my lower back. When I leaned light. over, I leaned over to get my glasses and he put his hand on my back. And from there, we were off to and the And then rocked in and said, wait, you like me? I said, yeah. And then we held hands through the rest of the movie. It was sweet. It was perfect. It was yeah, the perfect really first date. Gosh, you were so young. I knew immediately that I wanted to have him around forever. I honestly think that if he had asked me to marry him on the first date, I probably would have said yes. <laughs> he told me he loved me on the fifth date. Let me, let me just clarify. That's no, 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 let's end it there! No, let's, let's I want to clarify. That. I loved him from the very first date, 
And when he left five days later to go back to England, I cried in front of him, which was a good sign. Um, well, not for me, it was a good sign. I know, he thought, he, I was yeah, he thought that I was crazy. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't, I thought it was pretty. So we were sending messages to each other, I can't remember if it was text or email, but... At the it was end, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. It was Facebook. But you know, like when you write a message to someone that you like, and you're like, "Okay, love you." They're just like a casual "love you," and then he responds and like, "Oh gosh, like I don't, I don't know if I was ready for that." Bloody blah, blah. And then I realized, oh, it probably means something different to other people. I did love him, but also it was just kind of like a friendly "love you." But then when it was well received, I thought, "All right, okay, no, that was." Apparently a bold move that I didn't even know I was making, <laughs> but it paid off. This is in my book, so I'm just going to give you cliff notes. He was wearing a certain kind of footwear, if you want to know what, you will have to get naturally tan. But he was wearing a certain kind of footwear that was surprising for a date. I stand by it, and it's not what you're thinking. No, like when you read about it, when he describes it, it wasn't that. It was more acceptable, like socially acceptable, than he leads on. Mm. He makes it sound like I'm a slob. I'm not a slob. He's not a slob. He was actually very stylish. It was just a surprising footwear choice. If any of you can imagine going on a first date and Tan showing up in whatever he's wearing, naturally you're going to look down at yourself and think, okay, I miscalculated <laughs> what was happening here. We've been married twice. We have been married twice. We got married in England um, a long time ago. At Islington Town Hall. Mm -hmm. This was... Just under 10 years ago, a year and a half after we met. Because it was legal there. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as it became legal in the US, we got married here, in New York. Mm -hmm. So we've been married twice. We're gonna get married multiple times, I'm sure. We've said we're gonna get married multiple times. However, as you will know if you watch Queer Eye, we're not, I'm not the romantic kind of guy with grand gestures like that. I do, we do everyday romance, not, not like, anniversaries or valentines. I couldn't give a crap about commercial stuff. We're lovely with each other every day. Barf. Barf. If you need a barf bag, just go get one. I'll understand. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below. I didn't know how I was going to feel about answering questions like this, but I actually really enjoyed it. So, what other questions do you have for me? Let me know what else you want to know about what goes on in my life behind the scenes. But actually, I do want to know what helps you relax. Mine is sleep. Mine gets me back to feeling like a normal person. What makes you feel like a normal person again after a stressful day or week or month or year or whatever? And I'll try and do another pillow talk very, very soon.